بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد. Continue on in our silsila or our series of lectures, uh, part two, which refers to the status of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, the foundation of أهل السنة والجماعة. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty says in the Quran, وَصَابَكُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِنِينَ وَالْأَنْصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُهُمْ بِأَسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَجْرِي تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah the Almighty says in this ayat, which is in Surah Al-Tawbah, Allah Taala mentions, and the first to lead the way of the Muhajireen and the Ansar. And those who follow them in goodness, Allah is well pleased with them, and they are well pleased with him. And he hath made ready for them gardens underneath which rivers flow, wherein they will abide forever. That is the supreme triumph. Isn't that none other than the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising and referring to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the Muhajireen and the Ansar. And those who follow them in goodness, Allah is well pleased with them, and they are well pleased with Him. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them. However, we will find that other sects and groups who consider themselves amongst the body of Muslims, some of them are Muslim, some of them are not Muslim. They are outside the fold of Islam because they hate what Allah has revealed. And they lie about, uh, uh, they do those things which take them out of the fold of Islam. However, the point being is that there are those individuals who consider themselves Muslim, who hate the Muhajireen and Ansar, meaning they hate the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi So ask yourself, ask yourself as a Muslim, how is it that a person could go against even the Quran itself? That you have to call into question their Islam. Allah Taala says, "Fi kitab al Karim, Muhammad Rasulullah." وَالَّذِينَ مَعْهُ أَشَدَّا عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ رُحَمَا بَيْنَهُمْ This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He says subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those with him are hard against the disbelievers and merciful amongst themselves. Then Allah continues to, in the same verse, Thou, O Muhammad, seest them bowing and falling prostrate in worship, seeking bounty from Allah and His acceptance. The mark of them is on their foreheads, from the traces of prostration. Such is their likeness in the Torah, and their likeness in the Gospel. Like as sown corn that sendeth forth its shoot, and strengthen, uh, and, and, rise, and rises firm upon its stock, delighting the sowers, that he may enrage the disbelievers with the sight of them. Allah hath promised unto such of them as believe and do good works, forgiveness and immense reward. This is the status of the companions and those who follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah tabaraka ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, wala al-fuqara al-muhajireen aladheena akhriju min diyarihim wa amwalikim yabtaguna fadlum min Allah wa ridwanin wa yansurun Allah wa rasooluhu ulaika humul humul sadiqoon sadiqoon Allah Taala mentions in this verse, He says, and it is for the poor fugitives or the poor uh, immigrants who have been driven out from their homes and their belongings, who seek bounty from Allah and help Allah and His Messenger. They are the loyal ones. This is Surah Al Hashr. How can we deny the verses of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Qatada رضي الله تعالى عنه, one of the Tabi'een stated regarding this verse. He said, those muhajireen, those immigrants that left their homes, their wealth, and families out of love for Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and chose Islam, although it required, they, they chose Islam, although it required sacrifice and difficulty. Even though it was mentioned to us that a man would tie a rock to his stomach to endure the hunger pains. This is in Tafsir al-Baghali. This is what uh, uh, Qatada said regarding the companions of the Prophet وسلم, regarding the meaning of this, this verse that they sacrifice their, their, their homes, their wealth, their families out of love for Allah and His Messenger.
to help and assist Allah's religion and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam establish this blessed religion. This is the sharon of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in. But what about those people who curse the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the companion, the companions, radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in, and 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 distort their message and lie and distort their image? What about these individuals? How is it that we should uh, that we can reflect on, you know, how to deal with individuals like this? Wa ayyadu billah minhum. Narrated Abu Sa'id al Khudri and, uh, and Sahih al Bukhari, he said, Radiallahu ta'ala anu, Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A time will come upon the people when a group of people will wage a holy war and it will be said, Is there among you anyone who has accompanied Allah's Apostle? They will say, Yes, and so victory will be bestowed upon them. Then a time will come upon the people when a group of people will wage a holy war and it will be said, Is there any amongst you? Uh, who has accompanied the companions of uh, Allah's Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will say yes. So victory will be bestowed upon them. Then a time will come upon the people when a group of people will wage a holy war and it will be said, is there amongst you anyone who has been in the company of the companions of the companions of Allah's Apostle? They will say yes. And victory will be bestowed upon them. So look at that. That's a, a, a means for victory, is being favored by Allah to have been a companion of the Prophet Wasallam or to have been amongst the Tabi'een or Tabi'a Tabi'een. This is favored. This is the Salaf al-Saleh. These are the Salafiyun that we refer to. This is Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. This is the Asas of Ahl Sunnah and those who follow their path until the Day of Judgment. Narrated Imran ibn Hussein. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Allah's Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The best of my followers are those living in my generation. And then those who follow the latter, Imran added, I do not remember whether he mentioned two or three generations after his generation. Then the Prophet added, There will come after you people who will bear witness without being asked to do so. And will be treacherous and untrustworthy. And they will vow and never fulfill their vows. And fatness will appear amongst them, meaning obesity. Narrated Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed the people saying, Allah has given option to a slave to choose this world or what is with him. The slave has chosen what is with the law. Abu Bakr wept, and we were astonished at his weeping caused by what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned as to a slave of Allah who had been offered a choice. We learned later on that Allah's Apostle himself was the person who was given the choice. And that Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu knew best of all of us. Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam added, The person who has favored me, uh, who has favored me most of all, both with his company and wealth, is Abu Bakr. If I were to have taken a Khalil other than my, other than my Lord, I would have taken Abu Bakr as such. But what relates us is the Islamic brotherhood and friendliness. All the gates of the mosque should be closed except the gate of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Narrated Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. All of these are narrations of Bukhari. We used to compare the people as to who was better during the lifetime of Allah's apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We used to regard Abu Bakr as the best. Then Umar, then Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. Narrated Ammar Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. I saw Allah's apostle, uh, apostle salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi, and there was none with him but five slaves. Two women and Abu Bakr. Meaning those were the first converts to Islam at that point. Narrated Abu Barda. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. I was sitting with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr came, lifting up one corner, corner of his garment, uncovering his knee. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Your companion has had a quarrel. Abu Bakr greeted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, O oh Allah's apostle, there was something between me and the son of Al-Khattab. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. I talked to him harshly and then regretted that and requested him to forgive me, but he refused. This is why I've come to you. The Prophet ﷺ said thrice, O oh Abu Bakr, may Allah forgive you. In the meanwhile, Umar regretted his refusal of Abu Bakr's uh, uh, apology and went to Abu Bakr's house and asked if Abu Bakr was there. They replied in the negative. So he came to the Prophet ﷺ and greeted him. But signs of displeasure appeared on the face of the Prophet ﷺ till Abu Bakr pitied Umar 
So he knelt and said twice, O Allah's apostle, by Allah I was more unjust to him than he to me. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah sent me as an apostle to you people. But you said to me, you are telling a lie. While Abu Bakr said, he has said the truth and consoled me with himself and his money. Then he said twice, won't you then give up harming my companion? After that, no one harmed Abu Bakr. Narrated Abu Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do not abuse my companions, for if any one of you spent gold equal to Uhud in Allah's cause, it would not be equal to a mud, or even half a mud spent by one of them, which is like a, a hands, uh, hands full, or two palms full. Narrated Ibn uh, Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, while I was standing amongst the people who were invoking Allah for Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was lying on his deathbed, a man behind me rested his elbows on my shoulder and said, O oh Umar, may Allah bestow his mercy on you. I always hope that Allah will keep you with your two companions. For I have often heard Allah's apostle saying, I, Abu Bakr, and Umar were somewhere. I, Abu Bakr, and Umar did something. I, Abu Bakr, and Umar set out. So I hope that Allah will keep you with both of them. I turned back to see that the speaker was Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Narrated ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. When the dead body of Umar was put on his deathbed, the people gathered around him and invoked Allah and prayed for him before the body was taken away. And I was amongst them. Suddenly I felt someone taking hold of my shoulder and found that it was Ali ibn Abi Talib. Uh, uh, Ali ta'ala anhu invoked Allah's mercy for Omar and said, O oh Omar, you have not left behind you a person whose deeds I'd like to imitate and meet Allah with more than I like. I like your deeds. By Allah, I always thought that Allah would keep you with your two companions. For very often I used to hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, I, Abu Bakr, and Omar went somewhere. I, Abu Bakr, and Umar entered somewhere. I, Abu Bakr, and Umar went out. Narrated Sa'ad ibn Ubaidah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a man came to Ibn Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and asked about Uthman, and Ibn Umar mentioned his good deeds and said to the questioner, perhaps these effects annoy you. The other said, yes. Ibn Umar said, may Allah stick your nose in the dust, meaning to degrade you. Then the man asked about Ali, Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ibn Umar mentioned his good deeds and said, It's all true. And that is his house in the midst of the houses of the Prophet. Perhaps these facts have hurt you. The questioner said, Yes, Ibn Yes. Ibn Umar said, May Allah stick your nose in the dust. Go away and do whatever you can against me. This is how the uh, companions of the Prophet were with people who innovated and hated the companions of the Prophet This is how the Salaf al-Sali were against bid'ah, wa, wa khurafat, wa that which goes against the Sunnah of the Prophet That's why we have the religion in its pristine form because we now have it and it's preserved because of their sacrifice. Because they didn't compromise the principles of Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah. We have to ask ourselves then, after listening to all those narrations, can a people be successful and considered Muslim when they go against these authentic narrations of the Prophet ﷺ? Can a people ever be successful when they seek to doubt the trustworthiness of those who carried and supported his religion? Can a people ever be trusted and successful when they question the authenticity of the Quran, undermine the judgment of the Prophet ﷺ by his choice of wives and companions, and all the positive endearing statements he ﷺ made regarding them? Can a people ever be trusted and successful? Can we ignore the ignorance and deception of a people whose creed is based upon cursing and accusing those loved by the Prophet ﷺ and whose books are filled with tales from questionable men who they claim are infallible? Can we ignore their ignorance and their deception? Abedin, you should know, O Muslim, beware of anything or anyone who speaks ill about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech, which is the Qur'an, his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa and those who protected and sacrificed for Islam. And I, and I will end this with a true statement, a true story that happened to me. I know a person who is a Sufi Ashari. And I asked him, and he said, oh, I've read some of the 
tafsir of some of the Rafida, and it's not so bad. They're not, why there's a lot of linguistic benefit, and there's a lot of this benefit and that benefit. I said, subhanAllah, where's your awwala wal bara? Aslan, you're an innovator. You're, you're, you, you change the, the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a new meaning. Allah says, astawa ala arsh, you say something else, astawa. We took uh, that it was taken by qawwa, or something uh, like this. You distort the meanings, so you already have innovation. But that's not enough. Then you have love for those people, and you read the books of those people to gain a broader understanding of Islam. What kind of understanding of Islam can you gain from a people who say the speech of Allah, the Quran is tampered with, and that the speech of Allah is incomplete, and that they're infallible imams, infallible. Who was infallible when the Prophet ﷺ said, that all the children of Adam, they are, they have mistakes or they commit sins. And the best of those is those who repent. May Allah bless us to be of the Tawabin. Those who, those who repent to Allah, those who practice the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, those who know the authentic creed based on Kitabillah, wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and love the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah forgive us for our sins. And that ends the second part of our lecture series, and we'll go to the last, the third part, which will deal with some of the aspects of the Shia Rafida. And I ask Allah to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah. And anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad.